Hey guys, so uh, it's AJ again. And so for this video, uh, I kind of want to just take you through uh, what it's like in my life at uh, at University of Virginia. So um, right now I'm actually heading to a thing called Monday Night Live, which is put on by an organization called uh, Chi Alpha. It's a Christian organization. And uh, I'll record some of it and uh, show it in the video. And then I'll move on to some other parts of my life. And let me set the let me reset the table about Corinth and what Corinth was like in, in this day. Uh, Corinth was a major city in the Roman world, as I mentioned before. It is it, it was the New York City of the Roman world because of the commerce that would flow through uh, through through uh, Corinth. It was a uh, Port City. It was also the, the Los Angeles of its day. It was an entertainment hub. It was the Las Vegas of its day because it was a place where people cast it off restraint. Okay? Sometimes the most loving thing you can do is put them, is to confront them in their sin. The most loving thing you can do is actually say, that is not right what you are doing. Gotta love the person. Number two is this. Let's read verse six and seven. It says this. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. Monday Night Live. That was that's something I go to about once a week. Um, put on by Chi Alpha the organization I mentioned. Um, and I don't know if you could discern uh, anything that uh, Pete, the pastor, was talking about. But um, the whole message this week was about how, as Christians, we need to be able to and be have the power to. Um, call out people when they're being hypocritical, when their words say one thing and when their actions say another. So that's really convicting to me because I never want to call people out. That's always uncomfortable. It's always uh, pretty awkward to uh, say someone's in the wrong. But anyways, I um, just wanted to uh, show you guys that little tidbit of my, of my week. And next, I want to take you guys to the next part of my of my lovely week, which is marching band practice. Um, it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and today happens to be Tuesday, so let's go. Hey everyone, so uh, we're heading to band practice right now. I'm walking there with my uh, two buds, Nathan and Caleb. Um, we're going to try to get some footage of us playing, and uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, I hope that footage was uh, was really nice. Um, so now I'm heading back from band practice in the car. Uh, I actually just had a post-band practice Bible study with all these beautiful people in this car, uh, including the driver <laughs> um, and Sharon, who left. Uh, so now 
I'm gonna move on to the next day of my life, which is Wednesday. Currently, I'm sitting outside my dorm because someone set off the fire alarm. And uh, I'm here with my two buds, uh, Will and Matthew. And uh, we're just waiting on the, uh, the fire trucks and everyone to come and, and uh, tell us we can go back inside. Uh, just a little piece of my uh, existence. This happens at, all the time. It happens all People the time. People in this dorm are idiots. They're idiots. But just a little piece of uh, my day today. Hey guys, so it's Friday morning and I'm having breakfast with my uh, bud Gavin. And so I'm gonna let Gavin introduce himself actually. So here you go. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Gavin. I'm a third year engineering student here at UVA with uh, AJ. And now we're getting breakfast. Oh. What a great guy. All right, so now it's Friday night and we're out here with uh, Kai Alpha and we're making some pancakes. AJ, AJ you're all, the, Bible. Where is all it? the drunk people that are gonna be walking by from uh, 10 to 12. Um, and hopefully we can also tell them about Jesus. We'll see how this goes. And they've been waiting for a little bit longer, so let me just get them there so they'll be ready to go, okay? Yeah, I got you. What do you want to do? Every day, let's move along. One second, I'll get you guys. You were talking about philosophy and stuff. Oh my god, I didn't even find you. You guys want some free pancakes? Free pancakes? No? Okay. All right. Have a great night, guys. Either of you guys want some free pancakes? No? Okay. Have a great night. Free pancakes? Oh, okay. Want some free pancakes? Like some free pancakes? Yes. Get that. Give me a reaction. <laughs> So that pancake ministry was just an absolute blast, man. We got to talk to so many people, so many people who were having bad nights or maybe good nights, and we just got to give them a pancake and and brighten their their night. And uh, hopefully they'll remember something that we said, maybe um, some some uh, part of the gospel that we shared, and maybe it'll stick with them, um, and they'll eventually their hearts will change for Jesus. But um, in the meantime, uh, for this last segment of the video, I just want to, I want to do this every week. I want to pick a passage and read through it from the Bible and uh, then discuss it, maybe draw a few lessons from it. And uh, I'm going to pick it this time, obviously, but uh, for coming weeks, uh, you can comment and I will take suggestions for, for passages to discuss. So let's get started. This is um, Isaiah 58, 6. Um, is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him, and to not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall, say, you shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. So I just, I love that, that passage because in the previous part of Isaiah 58, it's God saying why the Israelites fasting, their, why their fasting is not leading to God listening to their prayers. So they had this conception back then that if they fasted, if they didn't eat, then God 
despite how wicked they were, God would listen to their prayers just because they weren't eating. And God is, is saying, no, that's not, that's not the point. The point's not for you to do some religious work, um, some just act out of, out of the flesh to make me listen to you. What's going to make me listen to you is when you feed the poor, when you bring the homeless into your house, when you clothe the naked, then when you do that, I'm going to be present with you. And that's the true fast that I see. And that's so amazing because it just reminds you that we have this God that's not concerned about religious acts and religious works-based systems to get better. I mean, it's about this loving God who cares for the poor, who cares for the sick and the needy, and wants us to do the same. And then when we do that, then he's most present with us. So I encourage you this week, go out, feed, feed someone who's, who's in need. Um, give someone a place to stay if, if they need it. Um, so then God's going to be most present with you in your life. And you're going to feel God's presence the most. God's presence the most. But um, that's all for this week. Uh, and I guess I'll see you guys next time.